This is the Ponte Vecchio in Florence. And I've come here to celebrate not Florence Nightingale, who was born here, but the earliest of my Renaissance heroes this week. A man who is an artist, an architect, a sculptor, a jeweler, an engineer, and an inventor. But the most important thing he left us was something we know so well we take it for granted. Perspective. His name was Filippo Brunelleschi. Brunelleschi was born into a wealthy family and was given a good education in mathematics and Latin. So he was expected to become a doctor or a priest. But he had other ideas. At an early age, Brunelleschi decided he was interested in art. And so he asked his dad whether he could be apprenticed to a goldsmith. Now his father was a practical man and he realized that as a goldsmith, at least Filippo stood a fighting chance of being able to earn his living. And so he said, OK. This is the very heart of Florence. This extraordinary wedding cake of a building is the Cathedrale di Santa Maria del Fiore. And right opposite it is the baptistry, a rather older church. And it was between the two that Brunelleschi chose to demonstrate the art of perspective. It seems odd to us now that the rules of perspective hadn't all been worked out when Brunelleschi came along. After all, it looks obvious, if you look at the steps along this building, they get narrower as you go further back, and all these lines seem to converge to some point in the distance. And yet, when other artists did it, they did it by eye, and they often seemed to get it slightly wrong. Well, he'd surveyed a lot of buildings, and he reckoned he could define a mathematical technique for getting perspective exactly right. And I want to show you how I think he probably did it. I'm going to draw a picture of this tile. It's a very plain, ordinary square tile with a black diamond in the middle, but instead of drawing it square on, I'm going to draw it in perspective, like that, which is obviously rather trickier. And I think he must have imagined that from each corner of his, his object, a ray of light went up to his eye, like this. I I'll show you here, look. Here I've got one of these tiles here, and here is my eye. This metal eye here is my eye. This is my viewpoint. You must stick to one viewpoint. And from each point on the tile, you can see that there's a ray of light coming up to my eye. It's absolutely obvious. I'm going to draw the picture where this plastic screen is here. So you have to imagine a sheet of paper in here and imagine these rays of light actually going through the paper. Now, in a sense, the picture is drawing itself. But in order to show you how it works, I've got to cut all my rays of light. What I'm going to do is simply use the holes where my rays of light pass through the paper as the cornerstones of my sketch. Then all I have to do is join the dots. There, fantastic. It exactly matches. Come and have a look at this. Get your eye in here. Look, but look, there. Isn't that amazing? The idea that you could use the rules of optics to paint more convincing pictures was entirely new. And people were obviously sceptical because Brunelleschi felt he had to prove himself. For his demonstration, he said he would paint a perfect representation of the baptistry itself. He did it from a position just inside the cathedral doors, which are usually closed, but the cathedral authorities agreed to open them specially for me, so that I could recreate exactly what Brunelleschi did. He came inside three braccia, that's cubits, so that's about here, this must be the very spot where he stood to paint his picture. Now, I'm no sort of artist, and so I've done a rather crude sketch, as you'll see. Uh, there it is. <coughs> There's the little cupola thing on top, on the roof, on the sides, and the arches, and here's the door at the bottom. And you'll notice there's a hole in the door, and I'll explain the point of the hole later. Now, he did his drawing right here, and then he did a very cunning thing. He swung the picture round so that it faced the baptistry, and then he took a mirror. We are. And with the mirror, he was able to put it between the picture and the baptistry so that gradually the sketch replaces reality. So I'm looking at the door, and the sketch of the door takes its place. And then I look up, and the arch takes the place of the real arch. It exactly matches. And right up to the cupola on the top of the building, and the left-hand side of the building, I need to move over there, and I can see it. And the right-hand side... Brunelleschi's single-point perspective works because everything is drawn from one viewpoint. 
and by making you look at it through a hole, you see the real baptistry from one viewpoint too. It's uncanny the way the one replaces the other and all the lines are in position, even with this crude picture. And he, of course, had painted a really beautiful picture of the baptistry, and to add to the verisimilitude, where there is sky here, he used burnished silver, so that when his friends came and peered through the hole, reflected off the mirror, they could see the clouds moving past the roof. It must have looked absolutely spectacular. And they were truly amazed because they hadn't believed his ideas and he proved that his perspective really worked.